So what have you learned in the last five years of GraphQL that you'd use in the next five years? Everything. Hmm. Over the last five years, I've learned that GraphQL is actually more than just a tool. It changes how we work and communicate. Describing your data in contracts and all the crazy tools you can get once you do that. I think I learned how important this community is for a technical project. That it's really important to work on documentation and help other people contribute. Basically, it's about um, talking to people about GraphQL. So like different parts of GraphQL appeal to different people. Just kind of like how to talk to people about GraphQL and how to like get them excited about it. Well, I think the most interesting work in GraphQL is happening at the fringes. There are plenty more problems to solve in product engineering, and I think GraphQL will push to evolve with them. I have learned how to incrementally adopt GraphQL in an enterprise stack, and I will be using it in the years to come. I've learned that the idea of giving application developers and API consumers more power to request for the data that they want and reduce their dependency and communication overhead with the API team, uh, I think that idea is extremely powerful. Describe GraphQL in five words. In five words, uh, I would say intuitive. Give control to the consumer. Unifying. Automate your data work. Three words. Ad hoc endpoints are dope, y'all. Types put clients in control. Get exactly what you want. Only get what you need. Iterative. Boolean it float string. ID. ID. Object oriented RPC with a little bit of magic. And uh, faster market, I think that's five words. Graphy? And very graphy, yes. What feature of GraphQL would you really miss if it were to go away? Control spacebar. Graphical, 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 <laughs> graphical. My favorite thing is showing people graph, graphical for the first time, I'm just like blowing their mind. I would miss the introspection tools like graphical a lot. Just like you can just write whatever you want, it comes back exactly what you wanted, and it's amazing. GraphQL syntax, it's like, it's a little bit of magic in this technology, it's really cool. I think that would be the ability to do joins across diverse data models. If for some reason GraphQL started giving you more data than you asked for, I'd be pretty unhappy. The fact that it's a protocol and an idea and not a technology or an implementation. It's not a technical feature, but I would really miss the community of engineers who continue to contribute to help make GraphQL what it is. GraphQL wouldn't exist without them. Which animal or plant would be your GraphQL mascot? Hmm. Interesting. A spider. Because spiders are always making graphs. It would be spider because it's a web developer. I think a spider is a pretty good one because uh, it has a web and this web goes to different places. Like they spin webs, it's interconnected like a graph. It would be like super cool on a shirt. Uh, spiders sound pretty cool. Like a hedgehog's very cute, but like, it's like, you know, spider's pretty cool. So I surrounded by a lot of plants and I think it should be a plant. A banyan tree, you know, kind of like taking all the stuff from the earth and then spreading it out to, uh, you know, whoever needs it. If you see wines on the buildings, they often start to like small and they grow and they spread for entire building. I think a chameleon. They have an uncanny ability to adapt to fit many different environments and scenarios. That would be badgers because they dig data. Humans. Humans are also nice animals. What would you want to change about GraphQL? I would like to introduce the equivalent of uh, SQL variables in GraphQL because they are so incredibly powerful. An approach to GraphQL that works well with microservices and it being less coupled to a monolithic design. I would also like for GraphQL to take a more opinionated stance on authorization, especially with like the introspection schema. I would make it easy for beginners to get started with GraphQL. I would really want to change how different services operate. I think that GraphQL servers across the board should get all the latest and greatest features, not just uh, the GraphQL servers in Ruby or Java or JavaScript. One, I would have to write an RFC if I really wanted to change something so it could get into the spec. 
Am I right? Being able to not have to alias uh, arms of a union that are different, having uh, an arm of a union be able to be an interface, that would be super useful, especially for the error handling stuff. I would want to see more implementations of real-time stuff. I think it's like the biggest challenge for GraphQL for the next uh, five or ten years is to learn how to innovate and not, not just only add small incremental improvements. I think looking back that if GraphQL had the ability to handle errors in the query, that might have changed how we thought about nullability. But there's actually a lot of different ways that I'd like to see GraphQL evolve and Luckily, we have a working group that meets every month that is working on these things right now. So, how did you and GraphQL meet? Well, GraphQL's cousin owed me money. So I went over to GraphQL's cousin's house to collect the money, but GraphQL's cousin wasn't there, but GraphQL was there. And I was like, wow, you're easy to talk to. I was working on rebuilding Facebook's iOS app in 2012, and I saw Nick Schrock's prototype of a new API concept that he called SuperGraph. SuperGraph. I thought the idea was so amazing that I just kind of invited myself to start contribute. We later named that GraphQL. I met GraphQL at PayPal when my current team member introduced me to it. Uh, very reluctantly, we had our own version of GraphQL, which was a JSON kind of a DSL. Uh, and we'd carefully kind of grown up with it and built it. And then someone said, you know what, this sounds like GraphQL. Why don't you just use GraphQL? And then we kind of started looking at GraphQL in more detail and tsk, light bulb went on. Mike Solomon at MSOL on Twitter. I think he told me about GraphQL. That's how I first found out about it, which was like right when it came out. And he was like, oh, look, this is so cool. And I was like, yeah, like whatever. I didn't really like look at it that much. And then he built a prototype and showed me. I was like, oh, uh, that's like actually super cool. I was working at Meteor and we were talking about how Meteor 2.0 should look like and how the data layer, layer should look like. And then we figure out GraphQL is amazing. And then out of that came Apollo. I was on this conference in uh, the RESTFest and I heard a talk about GraphQL. It was interesting, but the most important thing for me was that I heard that GitHub is using it, so it motivated me to actually look into this technology and spend time with it. We met through a mutual acquaintance, Relay, but once we met, we really hit it off. How does everybody else meet? Hacker News. What stack did you migrate GraphQL from? Too many uh, to think about. I came from a Node REST API background. Meteor, obviously. At like Medium, it was, we're using REST and like Node.js um, and JavaScript, and we went to React and GraphQL. A lot of .NET apps. Thousands of REST APIs. Java apps. Before GraphQL, I was heavily involved with OpenAPI. Back then, it was called Swagger. Angular apps. A mix of things, including REST APIs. However, a lot of our apps actually used an API called FQL, which was a variant of the SQL language on top of web APIs. React apps. We had a custom JSON DSL on our server, and we moved to GraphQL from that. Um, the JSON DSL was very similar to GraphQL, but imagine like the GraphQL language being embedded in a JSON. Lamp stack. Mean. Mern. Mon. Flash. Cold Fusion. Brasic. Dot net. Popcorn. Gravy. Anything. Too many. What do you think the hardest part of using GraphQL is? <sighs> Having to tell your parents you're not going to use REST anymore? Yeah. Visualizing the resolver process. Switching from the mindset of doing everything optimally uh, and in one batch to each resolver is independent. I think the initial adoption can be a challenge. I also think GraphQL clients can sometimes be more complex than many would like them to be. Two things, uh, client-side state management is still a little bit hard. Second is that it's hard to build a really good GraphQL server, especially that kind of leverages the more modern serverless and cloud native style trends. I think the hardest part currently is adopting GraphQL without a heavy client-side library. Sometimes things like data aggregation and counts, they have to be done outside the query language. Understanding how to model your data, I think it can be hard when you're first starting out. So I spend most of the time working on uh, reference implementation. GraphQL become purely theoretical for me. What is the biggest challenge you faced when adopting GraphQL? Ooh. I guess, like, what to do with all the extra time you have on your hands. <sighs> to be open to new concepts. It was hard to dive into GraphQL with the spec first. 
The biggest challenge I faced was caching on the client side. Keeping a coherent API, both the names and the behavior, as GraphQL quickly spread across the whole surface of Facebook. Companies' uh, internal politics. The hardest part, I think, is convincing people that it's a good idea. The biggest challenges that uh, I've found in adopting GraphQL are actually non-technical. How you organize your schema, who owns what part of your schema, and ultimately, who owns the operations of the GraphQL server. How would you convince someone today to migrate to GraphQL? I would definitely tailor it to the person I was talking to. Basically, you can develop like so much faster, and I think like focusing on that and talking about that and how it's like so awesome for people to develop now, I think I would focus on that. I would say start by just replacing existing data and existing code in your front end. I will show them graphical and I help them to write a couple of queries. I'd probably show them graphical and go from there. Honestly, just start using it. Front end folks can actually use the magic of GraphQL without having to build a server. You can actually do it right in the browser. I think I just show them graphical, the API explorer. Well, do you want to be able to build stuff without being blocked on your backend and API developer all the time? It's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes. And that's why you would want to move to GraphQL. How would you convince someone today to migrate to GraphQL? I'd tell them it's just better here. Like it's sunny all the time. You can wear flip flops every day. GraphQL has good food. Yeah. So it was interesting to answer with 10 questions. And I hope I will see you at GraphQL Asia 2020 in Bangalore. Bye. Love you. Sorry I couldn't be there. Um, yeah, miss you all a lot. That's it.